touching me. Stop touching me. I am up. She, she, me, you too. It's your boy, Tita, and I'm back. Well, excuse me. We're back with another. I'm here with my brother. The agent came, man. You already know what it is and how we do. Sorry, but we're both tired. Yeah, um, I literally just woke up. He just got off and tired. Uh, we're tired. Mm. Anyway, um, we're here looking at a CBR uh, Dragon Ball saying his transformation right by look. I want to know what the world CBR is. Anyway, um. No, but um, man, we're big fans of Dragon Ball. Um, so we said, hey, why not? Um, I actually did a reaction to this channel probably about two years ago. When was first started, yeah, when I first started, I got to react. But don't forget to leave a like, comment on the video. If you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit that, that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to turn on the post notifications so you never miss an upload. And thank you to all the brand new subscribers. Um, as of late, we actually have about. Where was I when all this happened? 50. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so. Um, all right. let's go again. We're going to take a poll right now. Drop a like if you were one of those kids that tried to learn how to draw Dragon Ball character. I was. I ain't going to cap. I, I, I tried. tried. I tried Namek. Yo, I tried all types of, um, I think I was in, like, maybe middle school. I was trying to perfect drawing, even though I sucked. I was like, I won't get this. I won't get this. I tried. I tried the elementary. After that, I just stopped because I sucked. I tried to draw Sonic, too. There's in every single notebook you ever had. Yeah. I was definitely one of those kids. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing quite like the design of a Super Saiyan. But which one mm -hmm. is best? Hey, you guys remember that time that Vegeta finally had a chance to show up Goku and take down a major villain without his rival's help? That time that Vegeta showed off his new Super Saiyan grade oh, 2 oh, ability oh, that... Oh, I'm sorry, but that, that scene always, that always like, kind of pissed me off a little bit because there, and you're like, now but let him go and go up 18. But, but it's sad. You got to think, they are a warrior race. So they but I'm they, just they saying, always, like, they that, all, they that always, legit pissed me off. They don't bro. think like that. They always want to fight the best. They don't I know fight they want to fight the best. They're just like, bro, come on. Mm, I'm done that. ...was enough to finish off in perfect cell only to play himself by allowing cell to become perfect. I bet Vegeta remembers. While there are definitely fans out there of the Super Saiyan grade 2 and 3 abilities that Vegeta and Future Trunks were sporting when Cell was proving why he was the Frieza-sized big bad, I think it represents all of the worst parts of the franchise. People critical of Dragon Ball Z often cite the overdramatic muscles, screaming, ridiculous hair, and circular plot lines with reasons why they were turned off. I'm a ride or die fan though, so don't listen to them, Akira Toriyama. Yeah. I do have to admit though that these complaints are a bit valid with the grade 2 and 3. Vegeta gains a frankly ridiculous musculature for his tiny frame, even crazier hair, and then it's revealed to be more of a benchmark for Goku and Gohan to pass than a game changer. While I love the series, this does prove to be a pattern from then on of Vegeta discovering new powers only for Goku to leapfrog him to a new and Always. better form. Always. Give the Prince of All Saints a Always. win already. He deserves Please. it. He do. Future Trunks' return to Dragon Ball Super received mixed acclaim. While everyone oh, was overjoyed I to see one of Dragon Ball Z. That's just like because, um, mm, I'm gonna say it. I guess his hair or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. He, he knows. Best Trunks characters knows. back against a new terrifying villain, Goku Black. His style was a bit off. That cool, confident Trunks who rolled up on Freeze and cut him to bits with his tiny jacket and sword over the shoulder was downgraded just a bit. He now had blue hair, a much less iconic outfit, and a whole lot less confidence than he did in Dragon Ball Z. It seemed like everything might change when he jumped up to Super Saiyan Rage, though, the form that put him closer to Goku and Vegeta's power level. The blue lighting, yeah, coupled with an intense new golden aura, could have been the iconic look of Super's future Trunks saga. I mean, Trunks really should have been the one to take Zamasu out once and for all. For one glorious second, it looked like he might live up to the hype shown in his DBZ day. In 
Instead, this ended up being more of a Super Saiyan Grade 2 situation and has been thrown in the same forgotten lore folder alongside Launch and Dragon Ball Evolution. Dragon Ball GT may be the most controversial Dragon Ball topic, it right is. next to arguments it over whether Saitama could take down Goku. <laughs> Fans and haters of the non-canonical DBZ he sequel all agree killed. on the moment where the ill-fated series got a serious boost. Please get this from off the screen. Boy, this bottom, if I can't forget it. Really? In quality, Goku's fight against Baby Vegeta and his transformation into Super Saiyan 4 was really previous entry into the franchise so beloved. It also scored points for fans for addressing that whole great ape thing that Akira Toriyana just kind of dropped and successfully integrated it. Goku traded out the golden hair for red monkey fur and a new tail. Opinions on this design choice are indicative of this feel for GT. Some fans will argue that Super Saiyan 4 was the greatest in the franchise. Others refer to it as one of the franchise's lowest moments. No, you wanna guess which camp Akira Toriyama falls, falls into? Yeah. Super Saiyan God was the form that showed we were of Dragon Ball. So hold Gone on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If GT's not canon, does that make... Hmm. Because, like... G GT happens after the Boo Saga, and Super happens, like, right after Boo, so, would that make Super Saiyan 4 stronger than Super Saiyan God? No. Super Saiyan God is on a wholly different level. Oh, I'm sorry, Akira, but, um, can you please find a way to make Super Saiyan 4 canon in some way? I'm thinking it might be like parallel uh, universe. Yeah. The numerical lists of Super Saiyan level ups. They were now replaced with new god forms and the race for Goku and Vegeta to match the likes of Beerus and Weeps. That being said, between Super Saiyan God, Blue, and Ultra Instinct, the first one really isn't the standout. Yeah, like, Super Saiyan oh, Blue is more visually famous. striking, while Ultra Instinct breaks from DBZ entirely by not relying on a Super Saiyan ability at all. Still, that moment where all the Saiyans, including Little Fetus Pan, helped Goku ascend is one of the anime's best. If this was 2, Super Saiyan 3 yes. would have been my number one for sure. The first time I saw this form, I was blown away. I mean, Goku had hair trailing down his back now. How cool is that? Years later, though, I don't think Super Saiyan 3 has aged quite as well as some of the other designs. For one, it was originally designed way back in the early 90s, and you can really tell. Its place in the subsequent storylines really wasn't as big a deal as its first reveal would have you believe. 3 isn't a form that we've seen all that often, and it was overshadowed in the Boo arc with plenty of fusions, ultimate forms, and super weapons. If the middle school version of me who drew like 50 sketches of Super Saiyan 3, Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, and Gohan knew that I was saying this, he would be very mad at me. I ain't gonna lie, they made Super Saiyan You and your team need organized timesheets. With Connect Team, it's I'm quick, sorry, fast, and simple. How simple? Your user just clocks in. Oh, I want to say like middle school. If Super Saiyan Rose was a standard uh, Saiyan Super form, Saiyan I don't know if it would work out. I love Goku, but I don't know if he can pull off pink hair when he's not secretly Zamasu. Rose works really well for Goku Black though, because it provides an excellent visual contrast against Super Saiyan Blue. Not only does it work in the anime, it's just a fantastic addition to the franchise as a whole. Look at how much it pops in Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I think that really says it all, to be honest. Broly is kind of the ultimate underdog story for non-canon Dragon Ball characters. I'm sure Cooler, Bojack, and Lord Slug probably get together once a year to watch Dragon Ball Super Broly with tears in their eyes as they hope to get their canon treatment. I do have some hope for Cooler, at least. So, what was it about Broly that was good enough for him to be brought into the big leagues? I mean, just look at the guy. Funnily enough, the creator behind the original Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan movie, wasn't... 
Admired by none other than the Super Saiyan Grade 3 form Trunks showcased in DBZ. While my opinions on Grade 3 are clear in this video, I think the legendary Super Saiyan form is a much better usage of the hyper-muscular idea. For one, Trunks and Vegeta are both relatively tiny, with neither approaching 6 feet. This makes their over-the-top musculature seem strange. For only Man is a big bad dude who stands <laughs> whopping 9 feet when he's full legendary Super oh. Saiyan. 9 feet?! Woo! Well, you this makes him a full-sized <laughs> villain, who's instantly doing? clear as a powerful Goku? threat for Vegeta and Goku. Ultimately, what often but not always works best Wait. for Dragon Ball are simple design Fuck concepts Fuck that are instantly striking and understandable. Broly really looks freaking great on a movie poster, and that's likely power. why he's canon now. Sure. And that movie made $116 million, so I'd say it worked out. One of the best movies. Dragon Ball Super had quite the challenge in front of it. While fans were incredibly eager to see more Dragon Ball, millions of dollars at the box office levels of eager, a follow-up franchise has a lot of pressure to measure up. Just ask poor Boruto, which is currently being blasted on 4.5 million comment sections right now. CBR <sighs> likes to keep track of that kind of thing. Beerus and the Super Saiyan God form both went over pretty well with fans. Level of iconic. Enter Super Saiyan Blue, with a brilliantly simple design choice that became the signature look for Super. Sure, Super Saiyan Blue might just be Super Saiyan, but blue instead of gold, but it took off in ways Super Saiyan God didn't. Some of this just has to do with how the blue pops against the blues in both Goku and Vegeta's costumes. It arguably fits both fighters even more than the gold does. More wise though, it provided a good contrast to the Super Saiyan God form, as Vegeta and Goku both succeeded in integrating each form into their fighting style in different ways. Toriyama has a habit of taking simple ideas and making them iconic. Super Saiyan Blue is definitely the example that shows he hasn't missed a step in this regard. Well, here's to hoping that the recently revealed perfected Ultra Instinct works as yeah. well when it eventually oh, gets oh, its oh, anime oh. debut. Any time now would be great. No way. 2020 was a bit of a year. Some new Dragon Ball Super would be nice. Denying that the OG Super yes. Saiyan form is one of the most iconic looks in the entire series. Mm. In fact, I think it's safe to say that this is the most successful design choice for Dragon Ball since Akira Toriyama decided to give Goku that orange and blue gi. The blonde hair and blue eye transformation coupled with gravity-defying hair and a golden aura immediately made it clear to everyone that Goku hadn't just mastered Goku a new Kaioken ability. Yeah. No, he, he had changed had fundamentally so as a fighter and as a character. Everybody. Pretty much every subsequent arc in the series has tried to replicate so, that moment ever since. Listen, As I so you know Dragon Ball was supposed to go this long, right? Huh? Yeah, it was actually supposed to go to the um, Freezer Saga, and that was it. Really? He really was not. He, and Kerry Toyama, if you look at other big creators who actually do Dragon Ball, they actually tell you, like, I, it's the one I watch called Geek Number 101. If everybody who can get this far, y'all probably know who he is. But he's... It was supposed to go till just the freezer art until it got bigger and bigger and, and, bigger. Like, and then on, it man. actually got to the you no know, to us to the west yeah and boom yeah, it exploded. Cool. Yeah, Iconic it, it as the first Super Saiyan transformation is. is that, do you know the actual story behind it? Spoiler alert: It's hilariously mundane. Evidently, Akira Toriyama only had one assistant working with him on the yeah. Dragon Ball Z manga. This yeah, poor guy's yeah. time was being dominated by constantly coloring go hair mm. black. Yeah, so that, the uh, I, I forgot, like, um, in the manga, you know, they only had, like, black ink, so Akira Toriyama was like, alright, listen, we don't have to stop using some more black ink. Alright, you know, why don't we just give this a uh, like, new... A uh, form or something like that, and just leave the hair white yep. in the that, manga, that, that, that but it's really yellow. And um, yeah. per se, and hair change was a fantastic time saver. From a yeah. storytelling perspective, though, it is a very Toriyama thing to do. In interviews, he talks about how much he hates too much narrative complexity and narration. That's why all his bad guys tend to come in pairs of two, so that they can share exposition and dialogue. So Goku's big leveling up moment may have been an artistic practicality also the ultimate example of Toriyama's creative philosophy. Even if you'd never read or watched any Dragon Ball Z before that moment, you'd still know that Goku just crossed a serious threshold. This also proves that it sometimes pays to be nice to your collaborators.
The first Super Saiyan transformation is often cited as the single most iconic moment in the franchise. I'd actually argue that there's a different moment that actually topped it. Well, in the moment, at least. Oh, yeah. While most people would say that Goku is the main character of Dragon Ball Z, you could make a pretty solid case that Gohan was actually the protagonist for the first several arcs. Yeah. His journey from becoming a bookish, cowardly nerd to a truly yeah. fearless warrior was definitely the biggest character arc in the series. All of this culminated in the moment where Gohan Saiyan 2, finally surpassing his father's strength. He, the look of the battle-hardened, yeah, golden-haired no, he, he, Gohan he, taking he, Cell down is Gohan. still my favorite in the Gohan. entire he's franchise. This, this coupled with the fact that Gohan is dressed like his original master and spiritual stepdad Piccolo, and <laughs> really drove home Gohan's entire journey. Even Toriyama admitted that this was intended to be Gohan's passing the torch moment. Every Dragon Ball Super fan can oh, tell you, though, the, the, the didn't, didn't do it. really work out. Why Eventually, the series benched Gohan and put Goku back in the spotlight permanently, which kind of takes some of the power out of the Gohan vs. Cell fight. Still, if you can ignore literally everything that happened after it, Gohan's hero-defining moment is the culmination of the entire sequel series. For all you artists out there who... You <laughs> really tired, you know. But uh, but yeah, man. Dragon Ball was that was, I mean, just staying up late at night watching Toonami. Yeah. I think that's how I became short. <laughs> really? I stayed up late. Really, that's how you became yeah, short. Yeah, I think when I, when I actually found out what this was, bro, like I I I didn't have a chance to watch the movie, but I would actually watch and later on, like going back, I had to watch the movies. But I would sit there and watch. Um, Sailor Moon, Yu Yu Hakusho, yeah. and Dragon Ball Z, Bruh. all three of those at night, and it was late. So I used to go to bed around about 11, 11, 30, and get up for school. I did that every night when no, I was but, um, Tell me why, like, when I, um, when I was younger, and, well, you know how my mom was. Mm -hmm. But for all y'all out there, like, there's this one thing my mom always told me when I was younger, that I, still to this day, I cannot believe I actually believed it. She was saying that only God is supposed to have powers. Because she saw um, Dragon Ball Z. And she was watching Dragon Ball Z with me one time. And she was like, only God was supposed to have powers. I mean, that day is just a cartoon. Huh? It's just a cartoon. Yeah. Well, not excuse me, not a cartoon. It's an anime. Yeah, I was about to say it's you. An anime. <laughs> it's an anime, but still. I mean, they, they're not real. But thank God for my day because he was like, hey, your mama not here. Go ahead. <laughs> That is get you right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, that's it, for the, is, go ahead. that's it for the video, man. Um, yeah, just basically going, us going down memory road. Ooh, um, super saying for the first time. Oh, so good with this one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed because we did. It's your boy, Season. And the Age of Caveman. And, and we, we out. Peace. peace.